but we made a so we are talking about the page replacement algorithms and this is our page table I made a small review but I didn't record it uh, anyway uh, for the recording it is not that important so page frame number is something that I have to, we have to have in our page table entries then we have the modified bet we have the reference bet right these are the things and these are cacheable or not cacheable bet and these are the three things that we have seen that that can happen in in the in the page tables did somebody say something else Protection, yes. Protection uh, such as read, write, execution bits. Okay. All of these, all of these fields has to be updated by the hardware. Okay, have to be accessed, have to be accessed, and have to be uh, updated by hardware. Why? Software can access them. Mm -hmm. if they have the privileges but definitely hardware has to access them and hardware has to update them regularly and i am asking why because uh, those kind of changes can be done when the interruption has occurred after the interruption i mean well, af the, after the interrupts, you handle the interrupt yourself as an operating system, so software is okay to update all of these. Why do we need hardware help to modify and to access these fields on a page table entry? Be Beza is saying something. What, what? Okay, Beza. No, sorry, I missed. Why does the hardware have to modify these bits directly? without needing any uh, software help. Let's talk about this orbit. When is the orbit zero when it is one? Arbit it means reference bit. Yeah, when the page has uh, nearly loaded, the arbit should be zero. How about one? When when is it one? Uh, I mean, I think after loaded, it is already uh, has have to be changed to one because it's it is loaded because it is needed. So th there is no meaning for R then. Reference, right? So you, you mean that after loading, R bit becomes one and it is always one? Uh, I think, yes. No, it's, it's cleared when um, clock interrupt. R bit is cleared every yeah. clock interrupt. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So when, when does it become one again? Run um, any any numbering address. Uh, we when we need any, any numbering address in the page. Yeah. When you try when you need uh, some data from that page, our bit becomes one, right? So that means that if somebody said that, okay, I am going to move the contents of this address, okay, zero of B two to register R one, okay and the hardware goes to this address and it finds its page number of course it gets the contents and it moves it to register r1 also the hardware modifies this r bit for that page saying that okay this page is uh, referenced 
So, back to the original question again. Every time I make a memory reference, I need the hardware help to modify this R and M bits. Because if I am going to modify this uh, page table by myself using software, using instructions, then after every memory reference, I have to execute some instructions that would make my programs very, very slow. Very, very slow. Hundreds of times slower. Okay? That's why I need hardware help. I need hardware help to make these uh, uh, modifications uh, for my R and M bits. If, if the page is modified, then hardware says that this M bit is one for that page. If page is referenced, hardware makes this uh, one again. Okay, so that's why uh, that's why uh, um, we need hardware help. That's why we said that in our hands, as tools in our hands, we have the reference bit and the modified bit. That means that the hardware uh, will help us. Without the hardware help, I cannot do that. And I am going to use that uh, two hardware bits, RNM bits, and to, to assign a class number to each page, okay? We say that some of the pages are not referenced and are not modified, okay? If I need to replace a page, these are the pages that needs to be replaced, okay? And if there is a page, it is both referenced and modified, that means that it is probably likely that somebody is going to use it again, either to read or modify, okay? so. This should be the last. Then I, I have class one and class two. That this is called not recently used algorithm. Why it is not recently used? Because this is zero zero. This is the not recently used one, and this is the recently used one. It's called NRU algorithm. We looked at it, and uh, the, the, this is the basic algorithm actually. At process start time. All the R and M bits are zero. They are all reset. And on each clock interrupt, every 50 times a second, I clear the R bits, but not the M bits, of course. I need the M bits because I need to write it back to the desk. I cannot swap them out. Okay. When there is a page fault, okay, find a page that has a class zero and replace it. If you don't have such a page, then class one, if you don't have it, then class two, if you don't have it, then class three. That's it. Okay. And then, and then uh, what we have here is, <coughs> what we have here is um, resetting M and R bits, okay? At every clock, uh, R is reset, but M is not reset, and we talked about uh, that before, okay? So, uh, properties of NRU. NRU is not a very practical and uh, very use. It is not a very usable page replacement algorithm. Okay, uh, it's a very good start to look at the page replacement algorithms, uh, and it it it it bias towards discarding unmodified pages because it keeps. I mean, the day class numbers are two and three. Okay. Uh, uh, for some simple systems, it might be enough, okay? For for, for such system, it, it might be enough, but it has some interesting some interesting properties, okay? Uh, it looks relatively an idle page. It is efficient, okay? It doesn't ask for new hardware features, like other than the RNM bits, that's okay. Okay, it handles the modified pages, but it tries to keep them. It tries to keep them in the memory most of the time. Okay, uh, so that that is our first algorithm. Let's look at our second algorithm. First in and first out. We are going to use the. We are going to use the idea of let's replace the let's replace the all this algorithm first. All the, sorry. Rest of this to all this page first. Yeah, we eat. Can you dance with me? Can you dance with me? Okay. I have a.
I have a small, I have a small zoo there. Huh? İsteyecek misin Yiğit? Yiğit. Ha? Yiğit. Amca ne yapıyorsun be? Bir dakika benden izin istemeden almak yok onları. Alabilir miyim mi? Söyle hangisini mi? istiyorsun? Hangisini istiyorsun? Söylesene alabilir miyim desene. Amca ne? Ama sen ne dedin? Konuşacağım <gülüyor> sen dedin. Konuş. Söylerim şimdi benim için dersim var. Yani biraz sonra git onu sen. Tamam hadi ya biraz sonra. Sen onu geçir. Ben yerini geçer vereceğim tamam mı? Amin. Bizim e, e, beste sana var Sebil Hanım. He doesn't he doesn't talk to us. He is very shy. <laughs> But he he is a he is a animal maniac. Whenever he sees one, he just freezes up. So uh, so first and first out, it tries to page out the oldest page first. Okay. So the the data structure is this. It keeps a linked list of the pages. Remember our page table? Okay. This is our page table, right? How do you keep a how do you keep a linked list of page tables? Okay. These are our page table entries. 0 1 2 3 4 5 or maybe like the like the example says, okay. This is page A B C, D, G, H, etc. So I assign a letter for each page and I keep a link list like that. Okay. A link list like that. So whenever I load a new page, I add it to the end of this link list, give it a new name, and K may be here. Okay. K might be here. Okay, so this is the main data structure. So, do I need help from the hardware to make this first out, first in, first out data structure? Other than the other than the usual tools that we have, R and M bits, interrupts and etc. Yeah, we don't we don't need it, right? And I don't have to modify. I don't have to modify the page table so it is all set so instead of using actually instead of using actually these letters I would use exactly the indexes of the page table entries okay <coughs> so whenever whenever I add a new page I would add it to the end of it and I put the index number this is let's say uh, 20 and 24 etc okay So I know that this is the oldest one. When when the time uh, comes to replace a page after a page fault, I don't have enough pages in my memory. Okay, what am I gonna do? I say that get rid of this one because this is the oldest one. Okay, so it's simple enough. This is simple enough. Okay, but there is a problem. Uh, the problem is, even though this one is the oldest, Even though this one is the oldest, it still might be busy. Somebody might be using it. Okay, somebody might be using it. So, all this doesn't mean that it is replaceable. It might be usable. Okay, maybe this one is not that old, but it is not used. Maybe I should replace this one. So we are going to modify this algorithm a little bit, and it will be much better. Okay, so this is called second chance FIFO okay it is same as uh, pure FIFO first and first out but we utilize this R bet okay uh, when when the time comes to replace a page we look at this page the old one if R bet is one If R bit is one, that means that somebody is somebody is using it. I don't replace it. I put this at the end of the link list, so it's like a new page because R bit is one. 
and I make its orbit zero. I say that. Okay, now your orbit is zero, but I will I will treat you like a new page. So it is not replaced. Then I look at this one. If orbit is zero, then I replace this one because orbit zero means that nobody had used it recently. But if it is one, I would do the same thing. I would take this and put it at the end of the linked list. Okay, that, that's why it's called second chance. We are giving that page another chance to stay in the memory if the orbit is one. Okay. Okay, it, this one approximate uh, the least, okay, recently used behavior. Least recently used page, page replacement algorithms are the best ones, uh, but they are difficult to implement. This one kind of approximates the, the LRU behavior, least recently used behavior, and we are going to talk about it in a few minutes today. Okay, so this is an example here. A time to okay this is the most recently loaded page this is the oldest one okay and when when time comes to uh, replacing pages i look at the orbit if orbit is one then i would put this at the end of the uh, link list at the end of the queue but i clear the orbit first okay orbit is zero so second time when i get this a when the a becomes the oldest again second time if orbit is zero, then I would replace it. If orbit is one, then of course I am not going to replace it. Who is who is who is who is changing the orbit to one? Of course, the, whenever I uh, made a memory access, the when I made a memory access, the hardware is doing that. Okay. So this is called the second chance algorithm, and this is the main algorithm here. Loaded pages are ordered in a first in first out list. Okay, the oldest page first in this list. Okay, when the oldest page is selected for replacement, I check the orbit. If value is zero, then replace the page, no problem. If it is one, okay, that page gets a second chance. It clear the reference bit to zero and move page to the tail of the FIFO list and check the next oldest page. Okay. Of course, uh, you might end up with this. All the reference bits are one. Okay, let's look at this one. This is, uh, the orbits are all one. These are all my orbits. What's going to happen? They are all referenced and I need to replace somebody. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, if the orbit is one, okay, I cannot replace it. So I put this to the end, but I make it R uh, zero. I will do the same thing with B and C. They all become zero and they are put at the end of the link list. Now, when I look at this process at the end, I will end up having the same exact link list. A will be the oldest again at the beginning, but now it's uh, orbit is zero. So uh, I end up replacing A, and it, we know that it is the oldest one. So in the worst case, this would happen. So I would I would spend some time, I would spend some time to make this modifications in my link list. You might say that okay, this is going to take time. So it is going to take some time to make all these modifications to all the pages. Okay, in your page table. Uh, that's true, but page replacement is a costly process. Why? Because with the page replacement, you need to access the uh, I.O. device, the hard disk, or the SSD the drive, whatever. Okay, so that's already very costly. So making this kind of a data structure modification is not a very big problem. Okay. So if an instruction was... Uh, waiting for a page, it will have to wait for this uh, link list process to be over, right? Yeah, sure, yes. But even worse than that, I mean, these are all in the memory, okay? 
I am doing some memory processing. Well, yeah, every hundred nanoseconds, maybe I can spend that kind of time for the memory accesses, etc. Even worse than that, okay, if there is a page fault, if this instruction move F2 B1 R1 cause a page fault, okay, I have to wait for disk access and I have to wait uh, uh, that uh, uh, page to be uh, brought back from the desk and this instruction has to be has to be uh, uh, in the block process list so sometimes some of my instructions are are going to take a lot of time and I will not re I will not notice it because the page replacement is happening if this happens too much if this happens uh, very often if this happens very often okay uh, then in that case uh, that's called uh, trashing uh, uh, most of the time I am spending my time for replacing my pages instead of executing these kind of instructions okay so what you are asking is am I going to wait for all the three the linked list traversal etc yes you are going to wait sometimes yeah that's true but even worse you are going to wait for loading the data from the desk which is millions of times slower than traversing this linked list. Okay, thanks. Okay, that's why memory is important. If you don't have enough memory for all the processes in your computer, all of your processes will will get a lot slower because of these page replacements. Okay, there should be always there should be always some free memory. On your computer because whenever you need a new page okay so a new page is available you just use that new page you don't have to swap out stuff okay that's called the second chance uh, uh, uh, FIFO so this idea is good but it doesn't care about the of course it doesn't care about the modified this right so Remember the uh, NRU algorithm? It tends to keep the modified pages in the memory because it's class was three. This one doesn't care about the modified bits. Okay. Uh, it makes all the decision based on the how all the page and uh, how all the pages and uh, uh, uh, uh, and if the arbit is zero or one. Question for you. Uh, are the R bits cleared at every clock interrupt with the second chance FIFO? Do we clear the R bits at every clock interrupt? Remember in the previous algorithm for the NRU? For the NRU, we cleared the R bits. For the second chance FIFO, the FIFO. Or maybe uh, because FIFO doesn't use arbits. For second second chance FIFO, do we clear the arbits every time there is a clock interrupt? For the newly loaded page, yes, we have to. Awesome. I am talking about the clock interrupts. Do we clear the arbits at every clock interrupt? Over every page you mean, sir, in the list. Let's go back to NRU, okay? NRU says that on clock interrupts, we clear all the arbits. Are we doing the same thing for second chance I, uh, FIFO? I think not, because we set uh, one all the arbits are when we clear the, the, those exactly we don't we didn't we don't clear the arbits at clock interrupts because if we do that if we do that then we wouldn't end up with these all these ones right we didn't uh, uh, all the uh, we didn't end up uh, doing this all these ones and if we clear the arbits at every clock interrupt I wouldn't know that I had given a page a second chance. 
Okay, that, that's that's the call, the second, second chance. How do I know that I have given a second chance? Because I cleared it as, I cleared it as uh, Arbet. So there is no, there is no clock interrupt replacement for the second chance FIFO. Okay, good. Uh, we like this algorithm a lot, but doing this, putting the stuff at the end, like taking this from here, okay, take this link out and make a new link and put it at the end, it's going to take a while, a few, or one time, okay, or still all one time, but I need to remove this link and I need to make a new link and etc. It's not going to. It's it's going to be. It's going to be a little bit expensive. <clears throat> so they say that. Okay, let's use a circular list. Okay, circular link list. What do I mean by circular link list? It's like this. Okay, there is a link between the first one and the last one. And how do I know that which one is the oldest? I would keep a pointer. This is the oldest. Okay. If this is not oldest, I mean, if I am moving this to the end of the link list, then I would say that now this is the oldest. If if I am doing the same thing, I would do this is the oldest. Okay. So I am keeping a simple pointer <coughs> to show the oldest page in a <coughs> link list. Okay, so moving the page to, to the end of the link list is not a problem. It is as simple as incrementing this pointer by just one or incrementing this iterator by just one. This is called this is called the clock algorithm. Since it's a circular link list, it looks like a, a, a clock and there is a pointer pointing to the oldest one. Okay. These are all my page table entries. Okay. So this looks like a really a clock. Of course, it's a link list, circular link list, but we call it a clock. And this next frame pointer points to the oldest one. When, when we need to replace a page, I look at this pointer. It says, okay, this is page number 45, good. And it's arbit is one. <coughs> Okay, this use is R actually. This use means R. R bit is one. If R bit is one, then I am not going to replace it. What am I gonna do? Tell me what am I gonna do? <coughs> okay. I'll move the pointer it's one hundred megabytes. Exactly. Move the pointer here and make this R zero. Okay. And I'm like, I'm going to look at this one. Uh, okay. Look at this one. Use is one. So I cannot replace it. So move pointer in the clockwise direction. Make it zero. And this one, it is not in use. Okay. R bit is not, R bit is not uh, one so I can replace this okay now I'm going to replace it and after the replacement I'm going to replace this one right after the replacement should I move my pointer or should I keep the pointer after the <clears throat> Replacement. I replace this page. Okay. This is not this is not page five five six anymore. It is page one seven two. Okay. So we should remove we should move it because yeah. this one is the newest one. This should be end of the link list, right? So this is the oldest one now. Okay. If, if there is a page to be replaced now, okay, uh, I am going to replace this. Okay, good. So this is called, this is called the clock algorithm. It is exactly the same as the second chance algorithm actually. 
Second chest 5 4 and the clock over them are exactly the same. This one is more efficient. Why? Because I am not moving a node from the beginning of the link test to the end. All I am doing is I am just keeping a pointer. That's it. Okay. So um, each page is a reference bit. When the page is first referenced, okay, a page fault that leads to load, of course. The use bit of the frame is set to one. Okay, and each subsequent reference to this page again sets this bit to one. Okay, so this is the algorithm clock policy, uh, finding the page to replace. Okay, the next frame pointer advances from frame to frame in this circular frame buffer. As long as the next frame buffer a pointer encounters a page in a frame with a reference bit of one, we set it to zero and move it to the next page. Again, I'm giving it a second chance. Okay, so this uh, pointer is always advanced whether you make a replacement or not. Good, any questions about this clock algorithm? Keep this in mind because we are going to come back to this one. This is a very nice data structure, okay? Very cheap, uh, it is a usable algorithm, okay? But the thing is that, um, the thing is that uh, it is not very precise about the last time we had used the last time we had used the um, the page. It doesn't know that because it only keeps the arbit, right? Okay, arbit, arbit. Maybe it was set maybe a few nanoseconds ago or hundred nanoseconds ago. I don't know. Okay, I mean, can you tell me that? Which one is used later, this page or this page, or this page? I know that they are all used, but I don't know when they have uh, when they have been used, because their arbits are all one. I cannot make that distinction. Of course, I like to replace a page uh, with the older usage time, older reference time, but I don't have that information here. I don't have that information uh, here, okay? I don't have that information here. That's why when it comes to the FIFO first and first out, okay, first and first out, we, we said that, we said that approximate the somehow least recently used behavior, but that behavior is not a uh, exact behavior, exact not least recent because it doesn't know the difference between which one is uh, used recently. Okay, it's just an approximation. And if that page fault happens a lot, well, in that case, I am modifying those arbits. I am making them zero a lot. In that case, maybe uh, this uh, approximation is better. But in that case, we don't like many page faults. So. So second chance five for the clock algorithm somehow approximates the LRU, but it is not exact LRU. So if this is not exact LRU, let's look at this LRU algorithm. Okay, we like LRU a lot. It's a very good uh, page replacement algorithm. Okay, uh, the idea is this. A page that hasn't been used, re used recently is unlikely to be used soon. Something like this. This is my page table. Okay. Uh, with all the algorithms, we, we, we only use the R and M bits. Okay. R and M bits. And the clock algorithm uses only the R bits. One, zero, one, zero, zero, one, kind of, okay. Okay, uh, the order is important. Order is kind of the order of the link list gives you the oldest ones, pay all those pages first. Okay, and Arbit tells you uh, if the page is referenced or not. That's it. But we don't know exactly when that page was accessed. Okay, we don't know exactly when that page is accessed. So, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? 
maybe we can add a new field in my page table that keeps the exact age of the page okay let's say we have a counter a counter a system wide counter its value is zero okay whenever have I, I whenever i have access a memory location let's say i have a memory location from this page i put zero in here and i increment this to one then i have access the memory location here and this is one and this is two another one this is three and okay it goes it is sorry this is two and this becomes three so i keep a counter a counter that keeps counting the memory accesses and always put this counter in this page table entry okay of course i access that this r bit is become one so this is a very nice algorithm it works very good so what is my replacement policy always replace a page okay with the oldest counter because zero means that i had access this long time ago these are all these are all yeah uh, uh, arbit is one i don't want to replace them but i had to replace one of them right let's say these are all one so which one am i going to replace okay this is the one that i'm going to replace because it is the oldest counter so this is called least recently used uh, algorithm okay so the question is what is what data structure do we use to track this i already told you I added a new field in my uh, page table. Each page table entry now has a timestamp. And that timestamp is modified whenever I access a element of that uh, page in the memory. Okay, so what is the problem? So see, this sounds so nice. So why didn't I tell you this from the beginning? I didn't tell you this because there is a problem with this approach. What is the problem? We have to increase the count in all pages. I mean, that would be slow, maybe. We have to increase the counter in all pages. What do you mean in all pages? Uh, when I, when I uh, for example, at the clock interrupt, maybe. We, we are not talking about clock interrupts. Every time may I make a memory reference, I increment this counter and I put the counter number in my page table. Also, it doesn't count to time. It counts to reference. Well, I mean, uh, I don't. I don't need the exact the universal time that we use in our real life. In this world, I mean, the oldest means that the reference count is smaller. Yeah, maybe it's about the selection algorithm. It it uh, it makes some decision between only the orbit or which uh, between the pages which are uh, which they have uh, orbits of what so what about the orbits of zero cannot... well i mean of course when i when you look at a page to replace okay uh, yeah. uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't try to replace an orbit of zero in fact i mean this algorithm doesn't use the this algorithm doesn't use the orbits or the embeds at all it just looks at the uh, the timestamp. Whenever the timestamp is uh, small, okay, the oldest timestamp, I replace it. So uh, I think this is a problem. So yeah. what is the problem? All the counters on the, on the page. Okay. So Beza, say it again. Uh, it's um, the operating system is, uh, has to look all the uh, counters in the page table. When there is a when there is a page fault, right? Yes. But that's that's okay because I am using the same thing with the clock algorithm too. I mean, 
sometimes I have to go over all the pages uh, when I need to because if there is a page fault I, I, I took the hit already I am already very late okay page handling the page fault is a expensive thing so looking at all the numbers in the uh, page table is not a very big problem because it is better than going to the disk right millions millions of times better than going to the disk and I'm going to go to the disk anyway so this is not a very big problem okay the problem is be be better than that I mean bigger than that Yeah, yeah, Yasin, forget about the Arbit. There is no Arbit with this algorithm. The algorithm is, okay, pick the page with the smallest counter. Is this about the um, size of the counter? No, the counter is 64-bit counter. It's a very large one. If the counter is, uh, if the counter is uh, all used up, uh, I am doing the overflow. I start from the zero again. I can handle it, no problem. Okay. Think about this. When do I when do I put these numbers in? Okay. I put these numbers in whenever there is a memory reference. Who is going to put these numbers in? As an operating system, am I going to go, do that? I mean, if I have instructions like this, move zero F two to R one then move r1 to 0 f to 7 etc after each memory reference i need to increment this counter and i need to put that number to wherever the, the, the these pages are right so who's going to do that operating system cannot do that because that means that i am going to go to the memory and i am going to modify stuff that that would be too too expensive Okay, so what am I going to do? I need hardware help. Hardware help. Okay, and a, a hardware should increment this counter by one every time I make a memory reference. And hardware should put this number inside the page table. Remember the page table entries? They are all accessed and modified by the hardware. Okay, so this kind of hardware is expensive to implement making this all these kind of modif uh, modifications is expensive that's why we although we like the recently used uh, algorithm okay uh, if it is not hardware assisted then we cannot we cannot implement it okay we have a 64-bit instruction counter it keeps the number of instructions that you have executed on each memory reference store the counter in a per, per, per page frame field. On a page fault, scan the page table for the lowest value. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and this is the whole algorithm. This is called hardware assisted LRU. If you have such a hardware, then use it. But it looks like, I mean, the, the way I set it up, we won't have hardware for it. All we have, all we have for each page is the page frame number, RVET, MVET, and the protection stuff. That's it. It's the most basic card there. Even this kind of luxury, I mean, even this is a luxury page table entry for most of the hardware, especially the hardware of the PCs for the 1980s and 90s. Okay. So hardware assisted LRU is something that we like to do. Least recently used page is something that we like to do but it is expensive to implement so what are we going to do we are going to simulate this lru with software okay so we are going to keep a counter but we are going to increment that counter at every clock tick not at every memory reference memory reference happens every 100 nanoseconds 
I am not talking about milliseconds or microseconds. I am talking about nanoseconds, every hundred nanoseconds. But every clock tick happens 50 times a second. Okay? 50 times a so it is about 20 milliseconds. So this one happens, and the difference between them are uh, million, millions of times uh, uh, more frequent than that one. Memory reference is much more frequent than this one. Okay, so we are going to soft, do the surface simulated LRU, but that means that I am not going to be able to measure the age of the page, how old did I access it in terms of memory references or in terms of instruction references, executions. It will be a little bit different. Okay, so uh, I am going to make a compromise, but it's going to be uh, a little bit better than our second chance five for the clock algorithm. So let me take 10 minutes of break. Okay. Uh, after the 10 minutes of break, we will continue. Bana vermem yok, babam söylese vermem ona. Vermiyor bana bak. 
Very silly, silly. Bir bana bak, bana bak be. Bir bak bana. <gülüyor> Şimdiki ben deri istiyorum ben. Öyle var ama. Öyle ama Hüseyin amca ben bu deveyi istiyorum be. Beni? Ne kadar büyük bir işkence ya. Bir yanda deve, bir yanda benimle konuşmak var. <gülüyor> Hangisini istiyorsun Yiğit? Söyle bana. Film mi istiyorsun? Ha? Film mi? Deve mi? Hangisi? Evet de. Deve de evet de. Tamam deve mi istiyorsun? Ha? Evet desene bir. Ya hadi evet de. Yok film istiyorum. Film istiyor öyle mi? Film istiyorsun. Bir defa bak, dede bak. Karar evet, veremedi de. yine. <gülüyor> tamam, deve senin olsun hadi. Deve istiyorum de. Öyle hadi. Ben vermem de hiç şey yok. Söylemiyorum. Tamam, şimdi bu deve alabilir ama bir sonraki geldiğinde benden istemeden hiçbir şey vermeyeceğim. Bak, tamam, deve senin olsun. Tamam, senin olsun diye al deve. Deveyi alalım, seninmiş. Tamam. Hadi güle güle. Hadi amcaya bay bay yap. Bay bay yaz. Amcaya bay bay yaz. Baba ben de. Bay bay bay bay de diyecek babam bana. Böyle yap bak. Elini sana bay bay yap hadi. Hadi güle güle. Hadi teşekkür ederim. Hadi güle güle. Hadi güle güle. Bakın sen ne diyeyim. Ne oldu? Sinan amcana söyle hadi bak. Hadi. Hangisini istiyormuş? Evet Sinan amcana. Ben bunu istiyorum. Ha, film istiyormuş. Tamam fili alabilirsin. Hadi al gel. Tamam. Hadi gire gire.
Okay, people, let's let's continue. So uh, we like this we like this uh, LRU hardware assisted LRU. It would be it would be very nice to have such hardware help, but we don't have it. So what are we gonna do? We are going to do the software simulation. Of course, I cannot simulate the incrementation of that counter using the with the memory references. Uh, uh, I am doing some compromises. I have a array of counters. These are okay. Okay, this is a page table. And for this page table, I have an array of counters. Okay, this is the counter. So what is the algorithm? Algorithm says that, algorithm says that at every clock tick, that means at 50 times a second. Okay. Look at the arbet of these pages. Look at the arbits of these pages and add that arbit to this counter. At the beginning, the counters are all zero. Okay. Now, when the clock interrupt happens, I look at this R number I added to here. So this one becomes one. So this is zero. This is one. This is one. This is one, etc. And then in the second uh, timer interrupt, let's say these are all zero and this is one. This is one. Okay, so what am I going to do? I add this one to there. So it is two now. This is one. This is one again. This one did not increase. This one did not decrease. This one is increased to two. And this one is one. And this one is one. So I have a counter table like that. So this counter table is kind of measuring how frequently I am using the uh, page. So of course, in this case, when I look at this, at the end of two clock cycles, I have two one one zero one zero two one one. Which one would you replace? This one was never referenced. This is the least frequently used one. I would replace this one. I would replace this one. Okay. So what is the problem with this approach? This is good. I mean, I'm not talking about a, a timestamp here instruction counter etc uh, I am every time I make a reference to that uh, I, every time every time I see that reference page uh, I every I'm sorry every time I see that page is referenced in a clock interrupt I increment this counter by one and I am uh, I am basically counting the number of clock interrupts uh, before which the page was modified or referenced. Okay, so this is what I'm doing. So what is the problem with this approach? That's the whole algorithm actually. This is the whole algorithm. Uh, too many additions to make. We have to make additions for all pages. At every clock interrupt, that's okay. Because clock interrupts doesn't happen so often. 20 times a second, not much. That's okay. Because remember, an RU, every clock interrupt, I cleared all the arbits. So, it's the same cost. I mean, clearing an arbit or adding it to some counter is not a very different thing. When do I clear the counter? Yeah, every, exactly. So, this one doesn't forget, okay? I have started my process. I kept using this page. Then later I started using this page maybe. So this one has a very high counter number, but I did not zero it, right? This one doesn't forget. The problem with this one is it never forgets. It keeps all those numbers in its head, okay, somewhere. So what is your solution? What is your solution? From time to time, clear out all the counters, make them zero. No, I don't like it. So what should I do? Is there any chance to take an average? Maybe. Take the average? 
You mean yeah. uh, you mean take the but you would take the average uh, uh, uh, with some. So you are saying that there are two references. How many clock interrupt has happened? Hundred. So this one still has the highest number. I mean, you still don't forget. I mean, if a page took lots of hits long time ago, it number is going to be high again. It doesn't know which one is recent, which one is not recent. Okay, it doesn't measure anything about time. It measures about the frequency of the page access. It doesn't know, it doesn't know how recent those accesses are. So we should set the value to zero when there's a reference. When there is a reference, the value to zero, in that case, I would replace that page and that would be a bad thing, right? If there is a reference, you like to keep that page because that's... But I don't see replacing the page with highest. No, of yeah. course not. Why would I replace a page with the highest counter? The high counter means that that page is busy. Somebody, is keep, somebody keeps using it. I thought we were keeping the time since last reference. That's how I understood it, I guess. This is the counter, okay? Counter means that every time uh, I see that R bit is one in a clock interrupt, I increment that counter. So I am counting the number of clock interrupts before which the page is referenced. Consider only the uh, small amount of uh, time, not time actually. Uh, we should consider only a specific number of uh, surface. You are saying that from time to time, clear out all the counters. No, I mean, uh, for example, we should consider only the last five. Time interval we should consider only. So you are saying that every five clock interrupts clear out everything? Uh, not clear everything. Just, are just you you okay? So I should I should keep. So you are saying that I should keep a running list of references for the last one, last five. So it's yeah. it is like it is like a page like that, one like this. So for each page, you will say this is time zero, time minus one, minus two, minus three, and minus four. I access that it's here, here, and here, here, here, here, here. So every time I make a new uh, clock interrupt, I would discard this column and I would shift the rest to the left. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, but this is what you are saying, right? Yeah, but but this is going. This is this is this is okay. This is fine. Uh, it it it sounds a little bit complicated, but maybe the circular list and etc. You can do it. But they found this solution. They they say that they they are exactly they are not doing exactly what you are offered, uh, but they are doing something similar. Uh, NFU with aging, not frequently used with aging. Okay, this is what we are gonna do. Okay, every time. Very similar to what you are saying, actually. Not exactly what same, uh, but similar. Let's say these are our counters, and this is my page table. Okay. Let's say this counter is. Uh, I am going to use the binary format because this this one needs shifting. This counter is zero one one zero. This counter is one one zero zero. This counter is zero zero one one. And this one is zero zero zero one and zero zero one zero. The orbits here, orbit is one zero one zero one. This one says that okay. Before at e, at every clock interrupt, at every clock interrupt, okay. Before before adding this orbit to this value, 
right shift one. Okay, I'm going to right shift this value by one. Right shifting a binary value means what? What does right shifting mean Alt for a binary? Just divide no, divide it by two, right? Right shifting is dividing by, dividing it by two. I am going to right shift it. So right shift means that uh, I am going to I am going to add a zero at the beginning. Like let me try to use a different color. Use use uh, green color. Okay, add a zero at the beginning. I am right shifting it, but I will get rid of the last least significant bits out, and then put this value, this value, the orbit value at the beginning. So I am going to put one here, and then one there, and then one there, and this is going to be your new counter. <coughs> so you are dividing the old value by two, and you are adding this R as a most significant digit to this binary value. Okay? So this is called aging. Why? Because if I don't... <coughs> If I don't see a one value, if I don't see a one value in the R bit, this one will keep getting zero at the beginning. And in a few in a few clock cycles, this value will get zero, like Yasin has suggested. He said that let's let's get uh, let's keep only the last five or ten uh, clock intervals, and that this is what he's doing actually. This is a more efficient implementation of what Yasin has suggested. Okay, he said that let's use the five five uh, clock cycles. This one says that uh, it is the size of this counter. I mean, if the counter is a thirty-two bit counter, then the, we are going to look at the last thirty-two clock interrupts. And if that page is referenced in all of them, then my counter value will be 2 to the power 32. Okay. So if I had accessed this page a lot, long time ago, but I am not accessing it. So this, its value will get smaller and smaller and it, it, it will, it will become zero after a while. Okay. So shift each counter right before each addition and add the orbit to the high order bit. Okay. And recent references have more weight in this case. Okay. Page page references. Okay. Uh, page reference this clock tick and the previous clock ticks are more important than references. Uh, reference only this time. Okay. So every clock tick, the orbit is updated. This doesn't mean that. I mean, this is very similar to NFU simulated LRU. We are not talking about updating the uh, we are not talking about the updating this counters. Okay. We are not talking about updating the counters um, every memory reference. We are talking about updating the counters every clock tick. Okay, good. So question again. Do we clear out the R bits at every clock interrupt? Do we clear out? <laughs> Since we did that, we didn't we keep any information about aging. I mean, so we should clear it out, right? Emek, is that what you're saying? We should clear out the R bits? Um, 
that we are counting with the clock, so that wasn't what I mean actually. If I don't clear out these arbets at every clock in the who clears them out? Who makes them zero? Somebody has to make it zero, right? Who makes them zero? Every time, okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's look at these algorithms. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Not recently used algorithm. Who makes those R bits zero? How does the hardware makes it zero? Clock interrupt, I mean. Clock interrupt, right? So this is clock interrupt. Okay, clock interrupt makes the orbit zero for the not recent use algorithm. How about this five algorithm? Who makes them zero? <coughs> First and first out. Who makes them zero? This is a very nice exam question, okay. actually. Operating okay. system. <laughs> well, of course, everything is done by the operating system, the hardware. Who makes them zero? Hardware, operating system, this phase. Let me add this as a nice idea for an exam question. Well, that would make a good exam question. Who makes the orbit for the 500? <clears throat> Go back and look at your notes. Mm -hmm. I guess there's no orbit for the algorithm. Yeah, for the 500, we don't use the orbits. We talked about it, right? No orbit used. How about the second chance? Who makes them zero? Clock interrupt? Uh, no. No. It is done by software. It is done by the software whenever we have the the oldest page to be replaced we yeah. look at its orbit if it is one we make it zero and put it at the end if it is zero then okay good so i put them in let me save this good Okay, so how about the clock algorithm? <coughs> Who makes them zero? This is the same thing, right? The linked list processing. Okay, it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. Okay, least recently used algorithm, LRU. Who makes the orbit zero? Remember the hardware assisted leaves used? Who makes them zero? Hardware assisted least recently used? No orbit is used. No orbit is used. Okay, good. Uh, how about the software simulation of LRU? In this case, again, this is the clock interrupt. Software that is the uh, not frequently used, okay, with aging. It is clock interrupt again. 
So good. So working set algorithm and uh, working set clock algorithm are two things that we are going to look at in a few minutes, and we will we'll talk about that later in a few minutes. Okay. So uh, the, the, these are all good. Okay. It looks like so far the only not recently used algorithm uses the ambit. Other than that, nobody used the ambit at all. Right. Okay. So this is one example for the simulated LRU in software. This is doing exactly what I did before. Let's say these are the arbits for each page. I have a total of six pages and these are the page counters. Okay. <coughs> so I put this one here, this one here, one there and one there. Okay. In the next clock cycle, clock interrupt. Okay. In the next clock interrupt, I shift all of my counters to the right and I put this one here, this one here, this one there. Okay. And I keep doing the same thing. Shift right and edit. It looks like <clears throat> it looks like the this this page one at the beginning is used a lot. Only in the last time it not it was not used. Okay. When we look at this one, which one would you which one would you replace? Okay, how many bits are there? One, two, three, four, eight bits. Okay. So what is this value? Can you tell me what this value is? Which one is the larger number? I think these are all one to larger than 128. These are big. Okay. I think the smallest one is this one. Why? Because the large, the, the most significant, no, smallest one is this one. This one is smallest. Okay. So this is nice, right? This one was accessed, was referenced three clock interrupts before, and that's it. But this one was referenced three clock bits, three clock cycles, three clock interrupts before, also five clock interrupts before. Okay, so I think that will be, this page will be replaced if I need to replace anything. Okay, so it remembers the time. It says that the older ones, I mean, it keeps, it keeps updating this counter, but using this aging idea, my counter gets aged, it gets old. So it's kind of measuring the time too. Okay, good. Any questions about this uh, simulated LRU? Again, this is simulated LRU, least recently used, but it is it is doing it is doing uh, not frequently used with aging. Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then I will continue. Um, so in terms of efficiency, I mean, clearing out all the arbits and making these additions and right shifting, right shifting is not a very big problem because hardware does that for me, right shifting, right? Uh, and adding that one bit is not a big problem. So those are very efficient operations actually. And I can do that. And remember, I am doing this 50 times a second. I am not doing this at every memory reference. Okay, let's look at this uh, concept of working set, but before that, uh, let's look at some important uh, concepts. One is uh, frame allocation. Okay. Usually, we don't allocate frames one by one. Okay. If this is my page table, if this is my page table, and if I don't have if I don't have more than 20% free space in this page table, what I do is I will replace at least 20% of these page tables and I will, I will then make it free. So I will say that this one, this one, this one is going to go and I will write them to disk if they are modified. If not, I am going to discard them. 
So I always keep I always keep 20% of my page table. 20% uh, of my page table uh, free. So whenever I have a page fault, okay, all I do is I just use one of these free page tables, page table entries, okay. This is called the demand paging, okay. When the free frame list is exhausted, a page replacement algorithm will choose a page to be replaced. Okay, so we'll allocate frames as necessary, and uh, the, the uh, uh, and there is a free frame list, and uh, uh, I I try to keep it free, like like this one. I mean, I don't in my in my system here. <coughs> in my system here, I have hundreds of processes running. But I don't load all of the pages in my memory. I don't keep them in my memory. Uh, and I I think I, here, where is my memory? So I have 30% of my memory available. Okay. Even though the total number of memory bytes required by all of my process is much larger than my physical memory, I don't I don't keep my physical memory 100% full okay I try to keep some part of my memory uh, available so that whenever I start loading a new program I have enough space let me try to open a new a new application that that I know will take lots of lots of Mm, these are not okay well I don't want to open okay I can maybe take this one I am opening a application it is loading as you see while I am can you see that while I am loading that application my used memory did not increase much and in fact it dropped a little bit so it swept out some part of my memory to the desk most probably most probably it um, it discarded some of the non-modified pages and that was it okay that was it so that doesn't mean that excel did not need any pages in my memory of course it needs it's a larger application but it just replaced some of the uh, some of the not modified pages with the excel pages so that's what's happening with this case okay so frame allocation is done uh, that way trashing is a trashing is a, a concept uh, for the operating system for the virtual memory it occurs when the processes start repeatedly doing the page faulting okay the for example i am in a loop this loop says that i am going to move this address to this page to this register then i am going to move r1 to another address then i am going to jump back to the loop if this address one and address two are at two different pages and i have only one page available to be replaced in my memory to be able to run this loop this one will cause a page fault and uh, this will load the page i will make this move but this one will cause another page fault and i will make that replacement again jump to the beginning and another replacement and another replacement so instead of executing my just two lines of loop most of the time i keep using my cpu time for making these page replacements so this process runs very very slowly very very slowly hundreds and sometimes thousands of times slowly because i keep going back to the desk this is called trashing 
<coughs> okay. Trashing is one of the main uh, uh, one of the main reasons most of our computers are behaving sluggishly. We don't have enough memory to load all the pages of an application. Even a single application can use up all the memory for all their systems. Okay. Instead of having eight gigabytes of memory, if I had just two gigabytes of memory on my computer, Windows 10 will use up all the pages and I won't have enough pages for any application. So whenever I start loading an application, okay, all the pages that the application loads will be swapped out for the new pages of that application again. So the application is fighting with itself. Okay, so the, the definition of trashing is okay uh, it is spending more time on paging than execution sometimes i hear people saying that big is aircast i think they mean this i i don't know what is the turkish term for trashing okay big is let's let's define it that way the the the, the kasmak in turkish means trashing in english Okay, any questions about Kasmak? Biggest hair caster. No? Okay, good. If there are no if there are no questions, then I will continue. Working set. Okay, a new concept. This is related to paging and page replacement again. <coughs> um Programs, let's say, let's look at this one. Let's say very simple computer system. I have these pages in my memory. This one, this page is used by operating system. This page is used by operating system. Okay. Uh, and this, these, these pages are used. Let me, let's not use the numbers. Okay. Operating system. Okay. There is a single process in my memory and these six pages are used by that process. Okay. And I'll, I have all of them in the memory. The principle of locality says that principle of locality says that you don't use all the pages at the same time. Your all programs run very locally, both instruction wise and uh, data wise. Usually I keep using, for example, these three pages for a certain amount of time. Later, I would say maybe I am going to use just these two. Okay. Depending on the time, depending on uh, what you are executing, you use only a small part of your RDS space. Okay. Only a small part of your RDS space. So what does that mean? That means that I don't have to keep all of my pages in the memory. That's a good thing. But how much memory should I keep? How much, how many of pages should I keep in the memory? Okay. How many pages should I keep in the memory? That's a, that's a question. And that depends on the application. That depends on the uh, process. Working set, just ask this question. Working, says, working set says that. Working set says that. I will define a function, this one. WKT at time T working set is the most recent reference pages for the last K references. Okay. For the so for the last one for the last one reference, how many pages did I reference? Of course, just one. So definitely whatever your application is, W1T is definitely one. For the last reference, of course I of course, I uh, reference a single page. I cannot do, I cannot, I cannot access more than one page. I cannot access less than one page for the last reference. So W1T is definitely one. That's it. Good. Okay. That's one thing. That's one thing. How about, how about this? How about W2? T. 
What is the value of W to T? For the last two references, how many pages did I did I re refer to? Two could be an answer, but maybe I should ask it this way. How many distinct pages did I refer to? For the last two references. You, you guys understand this one, right? For the last reference, I can access at most one reference. For the last two references, it could be two pages, or I, I may have accessed the same page twice, okay? So it could be one or two, right? And similarly, two, T, it could be one or two or three. It goes like that, okay? So if I like to draw the graph for this function with respect to k, okay, with respect to k, what am I going to find is something like that. So for 1, it is 1. For 2, maybe it is 2. For this application, for 3, it is 3. But maybe, maybe for, for example, for... 10 and 11, it is the same value of maybe 8. Okay, so when you make k larger, when you make k larger, the, the, the number of pages that you are referencing gets higher. How about this value? What is this value? What is this value? This is a page number, right? Tell me what that value is. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, it's total number of pages, maybe. Yeah, exactly, total. It is the, it is the total number of pages of that process. Because if I if I keep this k very large like trillions okay my last trillion accesses has to be all the pages all the accessible pages of my application okay so we say that this is asymptotically increasing okay okay it's an increasing function definitely this w k t is an increasing function it doesn't behave like you cannot see a w k t like this okay it will not happen it is definitely monotonically increasing function and it is asymptotically approaches the total program size okay so the, the thing is this remember what we are trying to do we are trying to we are trying to calculate we are trying to calculate how many pages of this process should i keep in the memory okay how many pages of this process should I keep in the memory? That is the working set. Okay. So what is the size of my working set? Depending on K. Okay. A program needs to have its working set in memory. That doesn't mean that the program does, needs the, all the pages uh, of that program in the memory. It says that for a program to run efficiently, it needs to have its working set in the memory. If the working set is small, then it needs to keep a small, small number of pages. If the working set is large, then it needs large number of pages. And it depends on uh, application, the, the, the, the design of the uh, application and the execution stage of the application. Okay, good. So we will develop a page replacement algorithm. 
uh, this idea in mind, with this idea in mind, we say that our page replacement algorithm will try to keep the working set in the memory, so we will not cause trashing, because if the working set is not in the memory, then I will cause this crashing. What is the, what is the, remember this example that I gave you? What is the working set for this part of the program? What is the working set number? What is the number of pages in the working set for this part of the program? Two. It's just two, right? If I keep these two pages in my memory, then this, uh, this part of the program will run very, very fast. Why? Because both of the pages are in the memory. So my working set is uh, just two. Okay? So very efficiently written piece of code, maybe. Okay? So as I said before, it depends on your application. It depends on part of your application. So a working set algorithm is something like this, and we are going to use it. Okay, before running a process, make sure that the working set is in the memory. And before W is asymptotic, okay, it's going to approach the number of page frames. The exact choice of K isn't critical as long as it is large enough. Okay, as long as K is large enough, uh, we should be we should be fine. So the trick is, the idea is, let's determine the working set. And this is how we are going to do that, okay? So ideally, we will track the last memory references, like we did with the uh, uh, uh, frequently used, not frequently used uh, algorithm or the software simulation of the least recently used algorithm. We will track the last memory references. Okay, uh, that's the ideal, ideal, ideal uh, case. But instead, we are going to track pages reference during the last seconds. Okay, last seconds means that that K number, my last references. Okay, and for each page, I will keep a virtual clock field. For each page, I will keep a virtual clock field. At each tick, update the clock field if R is set. Very similar to what we did with the LRG simulation. And pages not referenced during the last seconds may be discarded. Okay. So this is the working set algorithm. There is this is one example. For each page table entry, there is a clock. Okay, this is the current virtual time. I increase this current virtual time at every clock tick, not every frame reference, but every clock tick. Okay. And um, and during my during my uh, clock interrupt during my clock interrupt, okay, I clear out of course all the R bits. When there is a need for page replacement, I will scan this table page table or the virtual timetable with this. Okay, uh, if page not referenced during this uh, tick, of course I know that our bit is going to be zero. This clock field is not updated. If page is referenced, then I would put this clock field into these places. Okay. So this is what I do. Scan all the pages examining the R bit. If R bit is one, I would set time of last use to the current virtual time. So I would put this current virtual time to these one positions. If R bit is zero, if R bit is zero, and uh, uh, the age of the age of the page is larger than larger than some threshold, larger than some threshold. So how do I calculate the age of a page? How do you calculate the age of a page? What do you mean by age of the page? Current time minus uh, the last year time. Yeah, take the current virtual time minus this time. That will give you the that will give you the uh, age of the page. Of course, for the for
for that page i don't do that because i updated it with this one so each page is zero so this one so if r is zero and each age is larger than some threshold remove this page or mark it for for the page removal if r is zero and age is less than threshold okay i will keep this one because it is not old enough it is not old enough i may have i may access this again in a very short while this is the this is this might be my working set if r is one definitely this is my working set but if r is zero again i test the i test the um i test the age of the page and if it is not old enough then i keep it in, in my memory okay and uh, i try to remember the smallest time that means that try to remember okay try to remember the page that still is in the memory and it is the oldest because that's going to give you the uh, the k number the number k so how much of your how much of your uh, how much of your pages are you keeping in your uh, memory okay that's that's called the working set algorithm similar to surface simulation of lru but surface simulation of lru was dividing it by two and adding one, one by one this one doesn't say that this one says that i am going to use this current virtual time i will increment this current virtual time by one at every clock tick and at every clock tick i will do this i will i will put this number into the pages of r1 bits r r r, r bits one okay and for the zeros i will calculate their ages okay so this is automatically creating some space uh, at every clock uh, tick so to, to they made this algorithm a little bit more efficient by making it with the clock algorithm instead of instead of doing it this way they have implemented with the clock algorithm so we ws clock algorithm it is doing this but i don't have enough time to go over this one next time i will start doing this okay any questions so far? Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, that's it for today. I will see you on Monday. Please read the whole chapter. Nobody had asked any questions uh, uh, today. That might be because you had your exams, maybe this week. I hope uh, next week is going to be uh, uh, better. Please ask questions okay i'll see you on monday have a good day sir. thank you sir. have a nice day sir very nice day you too thank you